What's up guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about WandaVision episode eight titled Previously On. So careful for spoilers. If you're not caught up with WandaVision this season, you've been warned, let's get into it. So first things first, my camera is not working. I don't think it's broken. It's just not working. I think it's a software. I'm gonna get it figured out very soon, but I wanna get this review out to you guys. So no face cam. I do apologize, but hopefully I will have it working very, very soon. So let's talk about this episode. What a crazy episode. So just to preface this for you folks, if you don't know already, because I've mentioned it before, I love context. I love backstory. I love lore. These are things that I really enjoy when it comes to these shows. More times than not, if you give me a lot of this content and not a lot of action, I'm still going to be very satisfied because I do love these kinds of things. It's really something that I enjoy. So my view of this episode versus some other reviews I've seen of it already are going to be vastly different because I'm coming into it as someone who loves these kinds of episodes. So backstory episodes are great for me. I mean, you could argue the placement of it is in a weird spot, but I'm okay with that. I really just enjoy these kinds of things. And this week we were like filled to the brim with backstory and context and information. And I just loved almost every single moment of it. I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this week's episode, really. Now we're not going to go over every single Easter egg or, you know, mention of this, that, and the other. As you guys know, that's not really what I do. So if there's something that happens in the episode that you would like for me to talk about, please let me know in the comments below. So a couple things, there was no commercial this week. We didn't get that. We didn't get an intro. There was like a sitcom. It really didn't follow any of the structure that we've had thus far on the WandaVision series. So it felt like a very different type of episode, and I'm quite okay with that. So we start out with backstory on Agatha, and I have to say, love the de-aging technology they're using now. They're getting better and better and better at it. Catherine Hahn looked amazing in the spot. Like, honestly, it took me a minute to even realize that it was de-aging technology. It really was so flawless that it just looked naturally like her, but a little bit younger. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy they're getting better at that. We see her getting like dragged through the woods and obviously we know right away that this is Salem and this is a witch trial and that's what we're seeing here. So oddly enough, I believe there were seven witches, including her mother, and uh, that harkens back to the comic books and the, uh, the seven Salem seven from the series and these are the new Salem witches. So I, I don't know if that's exactly what we were seeing, but it's a very cool comic book reference. Um, and so they want her to admit that she's been using magic, um, I guess incorrectly or doing dark magic spells that she shouldn't be doing. And she's basically like, look, I could be good. Why are you punishing me for this? We don't really know how it got to this point. I would love if we would have known that, but it kind of doesn't matter too much because we see them try to use their magic on her. She ends up reversing it on them. The blue turns to purple and she absorbs their life energy. And it looks like she maybe absorbs their magic as well. And uh, she kills her mother and takes the brooch from her mother that we see her wearing quite often on the series. Almost every single episode, I believe she's had it on um, in one place or another. So we get this backstory on her and it shows that she is power hungry and this is the driving force of Agatha. At this point, I don't think there is another villain. Now, there could be. We could end up seeing another villain and I'm talking about specifically from the Agatha storyline. I don't think we're going to see another villain introduced unless it's going to continue on like in Doctor Strange 2 or something like that. I just don't see any reason for them to have another villain introduced this late into the series. I think Agatha is going to be the main villain in the story with Wanda. I'm not talking about Sword or Hayward or anything else right now specifically about her. I do believe that, like her song says, it was Agatha all along. All right, so when we flash back over to Wanda and Agatha talking. We're getting more and more context between these two and it's really great the banter between Wanda and Agatha and uh, Wanda gets so upset uh, she wants to use her magic on uh, Agatha and she can't because Agatha has put runes up in this structure that prevent Wanda from using her powers now oddly enough it does stop Wanda from using what we've seen as far as her warping reality and telekinesis and stuff like that but her eyes still glow and she still tries to use her telepathy on Agatha. Now I have some theories about that. We'll talk about that as we get to the end of this review. Uh, but it does seem a little odd that she couldn't use her magic, but her telepathy was available to her, but it just did not work on Agatha. Now I don't know if that's Agatha specifically or what, because we do know that 
when uh, Wiccan was talking to her earlier, uh, he was saying that she was quiet as well before she locked the kids away. So I think it's just Agatha. I think Agatha has a resistance to telepathy. Um, and I don't think it requires any of the runes or anything like that. I could be wrong, but just going uh, there with it. The bug that everybody was talking about, about it possibly being Mephisto or something else going on there, or it leads into something deeper. It just ended up being a bug, I think. It's just a bug that she transmutated and turned into a bird and then threw it to the bunny to eat to serve Scratchy or Senior Scratchy. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it wasn't anything that I could tell. It was just a bug because WandaVision has kind of trained us to look for details. Like everything is a detail. Everything seems to be an Easter egg. So I, I, again, I talked about this before about the impact of over theorizing and expectations for shows, because if we hadn't over theorized that this bug was going to be something else, it would have been just a bug and we wouldn't have thought much of it. But I see a lot of people upset that the bug ended up being just that. So again, that just goes back to my thoughts on that and everything. So we, we see that happen. And then uh, we have uh, Agatha trying to figure out details of Wanda and how she was able to do what she did because she's like, look, I know magic. You don't know spells, even basic spells. How are you able to do this? And Wanda doesn't know. And it, I don't get the impression, or at least I don't think that she was trying to hide anything from Agatha at this point. And I think Agatha thought so as well. So she takes Wanda's hair and uses that as a way to open a gateway into some of Wanda's history and things that she did uh, throughout her life uh, past trauma in order to try and figure out how Wanda did this. So here's the thing. We get to see Wanda step into her past and back in Sokovia with her mom and her dad and her brother. And we get a little bit of uh, context on why all the sitcoms, why I love Lucy, why Bewitched, why Malcolm in the Middle? Why does she keep going back to these things? Well, it's because sitcoms have been a part of her life since she was little. They were part of her life through most of the traumatic events she's been through. So in order for her to deal with that, she warped reality into sitcoms. And so we have that situation where, you know, this is explains exactly why Wanda does what she does and why we were in the place we were in. And so there's so many Easter eggs and references to the sitcoms, like clothing, outfits, furniture, um, different things that characters did. I'm not going to go through every single one of those uh, simply because of the fact that it would just take forever for me to do that. So we're going to, I'll leave that for later on. We'll talk about that at the end of the season. When we talk about all of the little Easter eggs and stuff that happened here. Um, I did find it interesting though, that some of the things that we referenced in the episodes did f like call back to the commercials, like uh, the, the, her seeing the Stark industries uh, bomb in the, in or missile in the house it reads back to the Stark commercial and then going into Strucker's base and then the Strucker watch it seems like the commercials did tie back into a lot of her trauma in her life. And so there's that. So in the scene where Wanda and her brother are hiding under the couch or the bed after this explosion happens and the Stark missile is sitting there blinking, Agatha says that Wanda used a probability hex to stop the bomb from going off because they were there for two days and, and nothing happened. It never exploded. So a lot of people were wondering, does that mean that Wanda is a mutant or what? And I would get the impression that I don't think she's a mutant. I think that what we find out at the end of the episode with what Wanda actually is theorized to be doesn't really add up to her being a mutant. It just makes her like a being of power. So we, we tease the Nexus, the whole Nexus being thing and stuff like that. All of those are things that sort of lead into what Wanda is being alluded to being here in this episode. So using a probability hex ties back to her comic book character. And it means that she's always had that that magic power within her, even if she didn't realize she was doing it. The next scene I want to talk about is Wanda going into the Hydra base and getting experiments done to her. So we were under the assumption that the Hydra experiments are literally what gave Wanda and Pietro or Quicksilver their powers. Now, don't know much about Quicksilver. We're not really certain about him. Like, were his powers available to him before he was experimented on, or was that 100% from Hydra experiments? We don't know. We're not totally sure. But one thing we do know is that when Wanda goes in to where Loki's scepter is, and it eventually real, reveals itself as the Mind Stone to Wanda, she gets a flash of what looks to be like a comic booky, like old school version of the Scarlet Witch look in this vision of the Mind Stone. This is the one thing that came off a bit corny to me. I didn't really like this, this vision of, of this 
person that looks like her and her Sokovian witch's outfit or whatever. I didn't like this. I, I understand that it's probably going to have some much bigger meaning later on, but I thought this was probably a bit too, I don't know, corny, I guess for me. And I, it's weird to say that on this show, but it did feel a bit strange to me in that scene, but it does go to show that there is a higher calling for her and it's at a cosmic scale. It's at a level beyond that of what we know here on earth. So Nexus being like, are we talking about that level with her being revealed uh, as being this character who's had magic all of her life? Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, we still don't know for sure. So we, the next scene we get is we get to see Wanda and Vision talking when she was hiding out during Captain America's Civil War at the Avengers base and uh, some of the conversations that they're having. And, you know, we see Vision walk through the wall and we see him do that, you know, again here in WandaVision. And uh, it just brings all that back to us. Now, something that was said there when they were talking about Quicksilver's death that really hit me hard was when Vision was talking to Wanda and he, he tells her, he's like, you know, I want to understand what all of this is. I'm not human, so I, I've never lost anyone. And he talks about grief, and he says, what is grief if it's not love persevering? And I thought, that's very deep. That's a very deep statement. And it hit me pretty hard. And I thought, so yeah, we're dealing with all of Wanda's trauma. That's really what this is. It's really just all of Wanda's trauma being shown to us. And we haven't had a proper backstory for Wanda because she got introduced in Age of Ultron as a quote unquote villain and eventually became a good guy and has struggled to be this character who works with the heroes. And we see that that trauma has caught up with her. Now, the next thing we get to see is when she goes to S.W.O.R.D. and we get to see her actually try to recover Vision's body. She wants to give him a proper burial. And this was great. I thought this scene was absolutely fantastic. She goes in, she demands to see him. Hayward actually calls her to the back and shows her vision in parts, just laying on this table and all broken up. And she just, she's, I mean, I know he's just an Android. He's not a human being, but to her, she's, he's much more than that. And I just thought how powerful that scene was and how traumatic that was for her. And I can't believe that Hayward did that. Anyway, she wasn't having it. She broke the glass. She jumped down there. She went to like scan him and she couldn't feel him. And so it's it's this thing between the two of them. They had this connection that ran deeper and saying that she couldn't feel him just goes to show that that connection was actually severed. And so that was crazy. I will say this though. Uh, one of the things that kind of stood out to me was when Wanda left from S.W.O.R.D., she didn't take Vision's body, which means that Hayward was lying about that when he told them that she broke in and stole the body. She literally did not do that. Um, she was upset, but she left the vibranium body there. So she leaves and goes back to Westview, and we get this scene where we get to see all the characters living out their normal lives without being these characters that she had put into uh, her fictional WandaVision show. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of these characters, people had theorized they were different characters. Like this person is probably, you know, pandemonium. This person is that, this, that, and the other. And so unfortunately, a lot of our theories, even some of my theories didn't actually pan out to be anything. Um, they're just people that live there that have been uh, usurped by Wanda's magic uh, with the hex. Uh, so we find out that Wanda and Vision uh, had purchased a property together. that They were going to build this house in Westview. And... It was this important thing for them. And we get this really emotional scene where Wanda goes to the house and she gets really upset. And this is where it all starts. This is what happens. She literally lets her powers explode and, you know, the everything around her reforms. The reality changes. It warps around her and the hex is created and everyone gets transformed. And this is how it all began. This is the start of what we're dealing with right now in WandaVision. And this is what Agatha wanted. She wanted to see where this came from, where this raw magic came from. And then we switch over to um, Wanda seeing herself in the set and hearing the boys scream for help. And Agatha has them outside basically roped um, around their necks or whatever. And she's floating with her comic version or her comic book, quote unquote, accurate suit floating in the air, uh, basically threatening Wanda. Now, the only thing that's kind of weird is in the basement of the house, Wanda couldn't access her magic. So I'm not sure why Agatha would confront her outside in the street 
without those runes stopping Wanda from using her powers. Unless Agatha wants her to use her powers for some reason. I thought that was a bit weird. But um, either way, she's got the kids out there. And she tells Wanda that she's using chaos magic. And that's right there. That's reference. It's not, it's not a mutation as far as we know. It is literally magic. And it's something that comes from like very old magics back at the dawn of creation. And, you know, this ties back to just so many different stories. Like Wanda's story in the comics has been told in a way that there is no like linear path. Like there is no go read this book. And then read all the way through here to get her backstory. Her backstory has been patchworked over years and years and years. So a lot of this being putting all this together and making it work. It's it's a lot of and there's a lot of stories also that that contradict things. So the chaos magic theory, not her not being a mutant, all of this kind of works for the show. And Agatha calls her a myth, which is the Scarlet Witch. Now, of course, we have not heard about this uh, this Scarlet Witch alias until now. Uh, which does probably tie into what Wanda saw in her vision with the Mind Stone. And um, this is probably going to make her an extremely powerful character. We already knew that, but this sort of aligns with that. So there you go. There we go with that. And we do get an end, like a mid credit scene, I guess, where we see Hayward uh, working with S.W.O.R.D. outside of the Hex, putting together their counterattack for what Wanda's doing. And it ends up being the white vision from the comics. Wow. So that is Project Cataract. They were basically creating a version of Vision that they could control. And are we going to get, like, is this going to be how our Vision comes back? Is, like, the Vision from the Hex, the one that she created, is that one going to merge with the body of himself that was destroyed? Is that what's going to happen? And he's going to look like he looks with the white now? That would be kind of cool. I'd be good with that, but I don't know if that's exactly what's going to happen. I guess we'll have to wait. But I know the finale is going to be absolutely crazy, and I'm very, very excited for it. This episode for me was just about as perfect as you can get. I would have liked a little bit more action, just a little bit more. But outside of that, there's literally nothing for me to complain about. So this is probably my favorite episode of the season. So I'm going to give this episode a 9.5 out of 10 because I love backstory. I love lore. I love context. And this did all of that for me. I did miss seeing Monica. We don't really know what's going on with Quicksilver. I think all those characters will be updated in next week's episode. But very, very excited to see where it's going to go. With that being said, guys, go down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this episode. What would you score it out of 10? Do you like these kinds of episodes? Did it feel out of place for you? Let me know in the comments below because I am very curious. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And that's pretty much it. I will catch you guys in the the next video. See you later.